Holy macaroni. You might think you're looking at Cali, but you're looking at Cleveland, Ohio, oh my oh. Signs of things to come, grand solar minimum upon us. And the ground is not shaking like that, the cameras are. So don't get your panties in a bunch, it's Cleveland. Keep calm, it's boom time. Glacier National Park quietly ditches signs saying glaciers will be all gone by 2020. And that's tonight's first boom. No, they won't. In fact, the update says 2080. Yes, since Barack Obama was in office and put the signs up in Glacier, saying that by 2020, you would never see a glacier ever again in Glacier. The glaciers have been growing epically, and the glaciers are now going to be there for 60 more in years. Or more. Or, or way more. <laughs> now, these signs installed during the administration of Barack Obama told parkgoers that global warming was so dire that by 2020, the glaciers would be gone. Glacier retreat in Glacier National Park speeds up and slows down with fluctuations, according to local climate, said the USGS, which has totally got their panties in a bunch because they're being wrong. And these signs were based on observations prior to 2010 when we were total D-bags and we had no idea what we're talking about. Now that we know what we're talking about, we're going to push the date to 2080. Now the USGS says much of the glaciers will be gone in 60 years when you'll all be dead. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> now, these are signs of the grand solar minimum and the slow impending doom that is happening before your very lives. If you're not going to wake up and there's going to be glaciers in New York, it doesn't happen that way. But when every single global warming alarmist prediction fails and they change it to climate change and everything causes, climate change causes everything, well, it also causes glaciers to grow to 2080 in Glacier National Park. Thank you, climate change. June snow in high country, rapid snow melt begins. Thank you, climate change. A wet winter bringing Record amounts of snow and unseasonably low spring temperatures to the Sierras because of global warming. Not! Get in your hole, Al, you prick. We're done with you. We're done. It's, it's finished. It's not unusual to see snow in this time of year. I mean, we, it's like a broken record of nonsense. If you're a sheep... And you're wondering what's going on? Yeah, you've heard all of it over and over again. Climate change causes everything. It causes cooling. It causes record snow. It causes record flooding. The year after, it's supposed to cause no snow ever, uh, no rain ever. It does all that and more. Authorities rescue motorists stranded in snow on Beartooth Pass. It causes people to get stranded, yes, in the middle of June on Beartooth Pass and the need to be stranded. Billings, Montana, a motorist was rescued over the weekend after getting stranded in deep snow in mid-June for five hours on Beartooth Pass. And they can kiss my dab time, dab worthy. Do it now. Heavy rain threat returns to flood-weary Arkansas as cosmic rays continue to increase. The 100-year flood becomes the 10-year flood, and the 500-year flood is continuing in Mississippi through Father's Day. Heavy rain threats return to flood-weary Arkansas and the Mississippi River Valleys, and a new Mississippi River crest is expected as backwater flood persists. Holy shists! That is a clay-dominant, micaceous, metamorphic rock, by the way. Mississippi Delta, the Mississippi River, is set for yet another crest this week. It's, above, it's been above flood stage for 110 days down in Mississippi. Yeah, down there. The flood is now on another slow rise after the gates of Steel Bayou were closed last week, the Mississippi River will see its third crest this year on June 14th in just three days when it gets to almost 51 feet. And then 
according to the mainstream, will slowly fall over the next 28 days, which means it's not going to return to normal until the end of July. According to the mainstream, we, we, re, uh, we predicted that six months ago, by the way. Great Lakes waters are still frigid for early June, and sheeple are freezing to death as they fall out of their kayaks. The cool air temperatures due to global warming are keeping the Great Lakes water temperatures chilly as well, as well as building glaciers in Montana. Here's a look at how cold the surface waters are across the Great Lakes. And if you're in any lake, but Lake Erie, do not kayak fall far from the shore. Heads up, Chi-Town. You just paddle out here, it goes from 60 to 40, like boom. And if you're in Duluth, it may appear warm at 55, but it's freezing. Holy macaroni. Lives will be lost. People buying Walmart kayaks will drown. Downtown, Leroy Brown. AccuWeather, new analysis predicts substantial 2019 crop yield shortfalls. So short, he's shaved and he's touching his face. Look at that. That's pathetic. Jeff Jorgensen looks over a partially flooded field. He farms near Shenandoah, Iowa. About a quarter of his land was lost this year to Missouri River flooding. Not only that, have you seen the latest crop reports? I bet you haven't. The latest AccuWeather analysis predicts corn yields will be a whopping 11.3% lower than the April USDA estimate. That's almost 20% lower than the lowest recorded yield ever. And we're about 30% lower. Let's just take you over to the data. Let's take you to the data. Hey, and you want to see my mug? We might need a little bit of... Here we are, crop progress, released June 10th, 2019. Corn planted in select states. I'll give you, I'll leave you links to this PDF. It is absolutely not working. Yeah, there it is. <coughs> Here you can see uh, eight, uh, corn planted in soybeans. Let's just go to soybeans. June 9th, 2018, last year, 92% planted. June 2nd. This year, 39%. June 9th this year, 60%. A difference of 32%. Corn conditions, selected states, week ending June 9th. Oh my God, 2019. We're talking 30, 45% fair to very poor. 45% fair to very poor. That is not looking good. You can check the crop progress on your own while you smoke a bone and you do your own dabs. But I digress. Weather.gov about to parse up. Nothing is parsed up here. We have connectivity issues tonight. Could be power. Could be a power issue. Let me just check the power there. Hours of powers. Matt Powers, I just emailed him. We're going to be doing some videos, hopefully, on growing soil. Because if you grow soil, you don't need to grow food. You just throw seeds down and it happens automatically. That is preparedness. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. If you know, want to know about permaculture, if you want to know about self reliance and self resilience, you have to watch people doing it. That's why Matt and I are doing these videos. I have my own experience, he has his. Together, we give you twice the the boom. Trust me, heat wave persists in the West. Excessive heat will persist across the West from the desert Southwest to the Pacific Northwest underneath a large ridge of high pressure, causing all of that record snow to melt. So flash flood warnings and watches in the light greens throughout the Four Corners region, especially Utah and Colorado up into Wyoming. Rivers will rise, rafters will die. Heat warnings or advisories are in effect for major metro areas, including Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Portland, Sacramento, San Diego, and San Fran. Also a concern is the threat for isolated dry thunderstorms in Northern California and Oregon, setting off fires, which we know 98% are caused by 
oil and gas industry uh, and other and assholes that light shit on fire because they don't do what they say they do. Now, let's bring you over here to the GFS model that's showing heavy snow from June 20th through the 21st. Sierras, Oregon. Yeah, into Wyoming. Look at that. Hello, summer. It may be a bummer. <laughs> We're watching it. We'll keep you informed. Thousands report feeling the 4.2 magnitude earthquake throughout Northeast Ohio. I thought it was so important that I would put it on loop and we could watch it together with sound. It's dab time, kids. Thanks for joining us. Sitting here on the phone and all of yeah. a sudden I heard a rumbling and the, the room moved. It swayed back and forth. Seismic activity sending shockwaves through Northeast Ohio. And it really scared me. It only lasted for a second, but it was frightening. A frightening feeling felt by thousands. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources confirming a 4.2 magnitude earthquake about a half mile off the coast of Eastlake. The strong shaking seen on cameras across the area. The uncertainty causing numerous people to call 911. Did something happen? My okay. whole living room shook. In just the Eastlake area, the fire chief says they fielded 351 calls in seven minutes. And it really overwhelms the center because during that 351 calls, we did get calls for service, for EMS calls, and for police calls regarding uh, burglar alarms uh, as a result of the earthquake. So it was a very tense little bit of a little time there, but we got ahead of it very quickly. Explaining the day's events is David Seja. He has a PhD in plate tectonics and is a curator of mineralogy at the Natural History Museum. We get a magnitude four earthquake about every 10 years. Uh, what's un probably unusual for this one is the number of people who have felt this one. The quake was centered in Lake County, but it was felt as far away as Sandusky and Canada. Seja says the wet weather may have played a role. One of the factors with all this rain we've having has the waters finally trickled down deep enough into the uh, fault zone that it's caused stress to be released, pushed down farther to another part of the fault where it isn't maybe drier, and that's where it fractured. ODNR says at least four aftershocks in the two magnitude range followed. The last time we saw something similar. On a day the earth shook here in northern Ohio. The a 1986 magnitude 5 earthquake in Lake County caused injuries and damage. That quake was nearly 10 times more powerful than this one. Many grateful it wasn't worse. There are no reports of any damage or injuries, but a lot of people did feel that quake. Lou and Tracy, the ODNR said. Holy macaroni, a lot of people felt that quake. Let's be the second thumbs up on that amazing reporting. Thank you on your amazing reporting. We're the second thumbs up. Boom! Cleveland rocks like a TikToks. Let's hear it. Holy. Let's bring it in. Oh, I love this. I love it when a plan comes together, especially in Cleveland. Where's Drew Carey when you need him? I'm not restarting. Okay, so there's updates coming in. That's why they're totally pulling our buttockses and throttling our asses. Goodbye, Ohio. Deuces. Since when does Ohio get earthquakes? Well, once every 10 years. Magnitude 4.0 in the Northeast, not so often, every 20 years. And when this many people feel it, never. So, there you go. Those are the stats, and I'm sticking with them. Because they're stats. I, mean, I, I can't even make them up because someone else did. So, so nothing's working. Seismic update. Error. Shit is hitting the fan. And thankfully, we're 14 minutes in when we can curse unadulterated and continuously. There has been an uptick in Canada. Specifically, no. Holy sh... That's Alaska. My bad. Uptick in Alaska. More specifically, uptick in California on the San Andreas today. So we're going to take note of this. This is a cacophony of quakes starting at the geysers and resulting in lateral up and down motion on the San Andreas. Haven't seen anything like this in a while. A uh, couple with some Goldfield, Nevada, Carlin deposit quakes. This could be connected. 
So I'm just going to say be very cognizant if you're on that San Andreas area moving forward. There are no seismic warnings currently that I'm aware of. I did not look at space weather. But we will do it now while we do a dab. No, we won't. We won't be dabbing. But hopefully space weather will come up if we type it in correctly. Bear with us. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Coming to you live, Shivalouche Volcano blasting the 13,000 feet, which is not much. And we do have Kvert live, Shivalouche action right now. We can update this. And we'll take a look at the most recent photography. Little puff, puff pass. Now you'll notice there's two calderas here. This and other little spires. We're going to get to that in a moment. If you're interested, volcanoes today, Kluchaskyav, as well as Popo du Cono Reventador, that Kamchatka Peninsula getting quite active. Popo giving a little puff, puff pass. Kluchaskyav erupting to 17,000 feet. Du Cono, continuous volcanic ash today to 8,000. Reventador and others. Sakodajima exploded, which it's been doing almost every day for three or four years. And now here we are at spaceweathernews.com. And we can see the solar minimum sun keeping us well below in that A range. Nothing happening. Solar wind speed dropping to the deck, bringing us to KP0 psychic just 12 hours ago. Probably going back into psychic mode any moment now. So there are no other seismic risks that I can see. This coronal hull won't couple for a day or two as it slowly rotates around. So in a day or so, we could be in a seismic warning, but I want you all to keep calm. Shivalouche has calmed down. You know what's not calmed down? We're going to get to that. Fuego. And Cinnabon. Cinnabon, we showed you the eruption to 55,000 feet the other day, but I want to talk about Udaina in the Kamchatka. The Kamchatka has been rocking, folks. Glucheskov. Kavert, I just showed you Shivalouche. Now, a recent paper has brought to attention a long-term increase in seismicity under this long, dormant volcano called Udaina. It is, known when it, it is unknown when it last erupted, probably 10, 12,000 years ago or so, attributed to the new magma intruding into the reactivated plumbing system. The unrest began December 2017, and a temporary seismic network was installed on May, July 2018. Now, over 500 earthquakes have been detected, central in an elliptical cluster more than five kilometers below the surface, which is not a shmurfus. It's a boom area. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on Udaina in the foreground with its neighbors coming here. Kluchiskyov. And Zima. Do you remember that in the 80s? Remember Zima? God. It's like nine bucks a six pack. Do cosmic rays trigger earthquakes and volcanic eruptions? This was published July 2nd, 2018. And uh, it's a boom. This is coming from Principal Scientifica International. You know why? Because I'm quoted like 900 times in this article. Now, according to Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Diamond explains, in the last few decades, research papers started to appear in the scientific press that clearly show correlation between cosmic solar radiation and the destructive geologic events like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. These research papers are supported by statistical evidence that go back hundreds of years. I went through some of these research papers and found an outstanding observed data that are self-explanatory if one equipped with the correct physics. <clears throat> now they continue. Well, I continue. Started in 1967, a study published with the Earth and Planetary Science Letters found solar activity plays a significant role in triggering earthquakes. In 1998, a scientist from Beijing Astronomical Observatory, Chinese Academy of Science, found a correlation between low solar activity and earthquakes. Another recent research carried on the Space and Science Research Center in Florida, U.S., showed strong correlation between solar activity and the largest earthquakes 
and volcanic eruptions within the continental United States and other regions of the world. Now, since then, and all these correlations, the latest paper that I've read about this topic is titled Explosive Volcanic Eruptions Triggered by Cosmic Rays. And we talked about this dozens of times in the beginning of this channel. The title of the paper is Volcano as a Bubble Chamber. The research was conducted by a Japanese scientist named Toshikazu Ebu Suzaki. They studied the relationship between solar magnetic activity and the 11 explosive eruptions from silicate-rich volcanoes in Japan over the last 306 years. And they found that nine of the eruptions occurred during solar minimums. Increased cosmic ray flux periods. However, I believe the researchers are quite accurate with the assumptions that the eruptions of those volcanoes were triggered by cosmic radiation. Their model of how the eruption is taking place, the mechanism what they call bubble nucleation induced by cosmic muons cannot possibly be correct. The process that would trigger the eruption is located deep within the magma chamber, several kilometers below the surface, not 10 meters within the surface of the volcano. To give credibility to their model, the researchers chose mountain volcanoes. In other words, they only considered eruptions that occur high above sea level. So, most siliceous rich volcanoes are closer to sea level. Cascades, in fact. Moreover, the paper provided clear data that showed most destructive earthquakes in the last three centuries in Japan took place during solar minimus. So, to add insult to injury and to add correlation, which is not causation, to the equation, what can we conclude? We can probably conclude that the work of John Casey in his amazing book, Upheaval, is true and that there is some rhyme to the reason the reason of the season the season being the grand solar minimum the eddy minimum that we're entering and the intensification of the weather patterns the volcanic eruptions um the electrical events like the discovery of steve in the last two years do you remember the aurora of the dragon yeah, it's only beginning, folks. And we're only putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So anyone that claims that they know a date or something specific, they're full of shit. We can only infer what will happen in the future based on historic evidence. There is no date available. There's no exact time frame, tick tock, so to speak. It's a slow, steady flow. Like the near record dead zone predicted in the Gulf of Mexico this summer. It's going to be a bummer. But the Gulf of Mexico is polluted with oil and gas, effluent and other shit from like wells that have been spewing shit up into the shore here. So who gives them? Honestly. And the rich assholes that live in this region where the dead zone migrates south can suck it additionally. If you didn't do your own research and decided to buy a million dollar property on the shore of the Gulf Coast and you have to deal with this, well, good for you. You know why? Because <laughs> good for you. This year's zone should be 8,717 square miles, killing everything and making your beach smell like high hell. An area roughly the size of New Hampshire, according to the research at Louisiana State University, the average Gulf dead zone is 5,000 square miles, and this one should almost be double. Do you know how many dead starfish and other shit are going to wash up and make everyone almost vomit day after day for months? I've been there. <laughs> I smelt it. I, I smelt it. And <clears throat> you know what that's from? Monsanto! And all the big ag dumping huge amounts of nitrogen and all kind of other chemicals right into the waterways that all flow down through Mississippi, which is now flooding and washing even more and more of those toxic chemicals from record flooding 
to create the record dead zone, which has nothing to do with climate change and everything to do with you allowing this to fucking happen to your planet, you fucking sheep. Bah! NASA's lunar lander was just rediscovered after being lost in space for 50 years. Oh my God, we just found it! <laughs> Massive Ebola outbreak spreads across the DRC border infected five-year-old in Uganda. Health authorities are scrambling to keep the deadly virus from spreading further. I mean, are we in a movie? Because it certainly feels like one. Yeah, that was real. Yeah. They don't know how to do that anymore. Mysterious large mass discovered on moon bewildered scientists. They're bewildered. Whatever it is, wherever it came from, we don't know where the large piece of metal twice the size of New Hampshire came from. New Hampshire's being used a lot these days. I wonder what's going to happen to that state. According to an April 2019 study published in the Journal of Geophysics. Oh my God. Well, let's, let's stop watching the lame stream. Let's get to the science. Geophysical research letters. Deep structure of the lunar south pole. Eitken Basin. Eitken, my ass. The south pole Eitken Basin is a gigantic impact structure. Holy shit. That is... Hold on. Now, this is not science. I'm going to tell you why. Because, first of all, the South Pole Eitken Basin, that was named by man. It's just a part of the moon. And then they go on to say, is a gigantic impact structure. There is no corroborating evidence. The problem is that there is no other tool in the toolbox of planetary geology or any cosmetary cometary debris, impact, asteroidal, any of the cosmology that's out there that could explain this any other way in the mainstream than a gigantic impact structure. Same thing they talk about up in New England and all over the U.S. and across the Earth and other planets. They talk only about gigantic impact structures. Olympus Mons. Are you kidding me? That's an electrical blister if you've ever seen one. We have high def pictures of Olympus Mons and it's not a volcano. I'm a geologist. I've studied many volcanoes. There is no eruption that ever happened there. It's not a basaltic shield volcano as they imply like Mauna Loa. It is an electrical scar blister the size of which you can't even imagine 300 miles wide. A blister from a, an electrical arc 300 miles wide. Now, because we do not have these type of tools in our toolbox, we have no other explanation. So when we explain it, we look like an idiot to people like me. So when I read this paper, I get halfway done the first sentence and I go, ah, ah, I must throw up because the people are so stupid because they only have one thing that it could be. And it's unfortunate because other esoteric scientists that are on the fringe, like Graham Hancock and others, are looking for the comet. They're looking for the impact. Because they haven't looked for another mechanism like electricity. The electric universe, which the ancients have been screaming and telling us about through petroglyphs. 30% of all petroglyphs that were unexplained on Earth are now explained by Anthony Peratt and his plasma experiments at Los Alamos. Do you not know about these? Please Google Parat instability and the connection to petroglyphs. Do it now. Thunderbolts.info. If you claim to want to know the truth and you don't do what I say, then you claim nothing. Now, the unfortunate thing is this whole paper is a farce because the only one tool in their toolbox is an impact structure and they use it in about the 10th word, impact structure. Which it is not. Everyone knows the moon is a spacecraft made of titanium. It's hollow inside and it's filled with aliens. Powerful super, flare, super flares could pose a threat to Earth. Can you believe this is coming out now in astronomy?
Micronova much? This is exactly what they're talking about. Astronomy Magazine. The mainstream has picked up what we've put down. They're picking it up. They're gobbling it up because nobody's watching them. Nobody's listening to them. They're listening to us, the scientists that have the data. And now they're like, they read it. And they're like, we're scientists too. Can we play science? Can we play with you guys? Oh my God, man. I want to play. I want to be the one that found it out. I did it. I'm the winner. I won. Powerful super flares could pose a threat to Earth. Breaking news, young and active stars often experience wildly strong eruptions called micronova. We know our older, calmer son may occasionally throw similar tantrums. Thank you, Chan Thomas. Astronomers have learned over the past decade that even large solar flares, powerful bursts of radiation from our sun are actually small potatoes compared to some of the flares we see around other stars. Yeah, stars are novaing everywhere. Not only that, I showed a petroglyph that I found in Utah of the Charlemagne event when a giant Jacob's Ladder formed in the Northern Hemisphere. Up north, right at the North Pole. And it looked like a feather. And they etched it in the rock. Now these super flares are mainly observed in young active stars, but our sun has been flaring regularly. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please email Doug Vote and he will talk endlessly about it. Or go to his channel and you can watch all his videos. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go away. Why Noah's Ark won't work? Well, now I was going to tear this paper a new be a butthole, but it's not really a paper and it really doesn't say anything. But in the short synopsis of what it does say, there, it's over. It's done. <laughs> it basically says if you took all the species and put it on a boat and rode it into the Micronova and the polar reversal and the grand solar minimum and everything that's happening as we descend into the next phase of humanity, half of that shit wouldn't even be able to live there. It's called evolution. It's a new cosmogenic environment, folks. Cosmic rays cause evolution. Now, here's the thing they're missing in this paper. If you put those creatures on the boat and you brought enough food for them and they mutated, well, maybe their offspring would be the new species and they would be on the boat. I think you guys miss the boat. Most people do. I'm way ahead of you. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I am not Illuminati. I am Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And I'm exhausted. I've been planning all day. I'm going to make a video tomorrow and show you some of the progress on what I've done. We've got Mike next door. He's doing all kind of shit. And we've got raised beds to plant. I only have seven more days to get all the seeds in the ground. And that's all I got to say. Thank you to all our one-time donors, all our new Patreons. Thank you to all of you sharing our videos. I saw a huge surge at Oppenheimer Ranch Project in view viewership. So we're putting these videos up on Oppenheimer two days later and 15,000 people are watching. So the message is getting out. And that's good news. Continue to share these videos. Comment below. If you're here to troll, troll away. We need haters too. We love each and every one of you. Now is the time to plant a seed. It doesn't matter where you live. You have until the 4th of July to get seeds in the ground. And then there's another planting season that begins in the fall. If you're zone six or higher and you're as high as I am and you don't even know what I'm talking about, you'll learn what zone you're in. So you can join the conversation. The conversation, which is the recapitulation of the situation, which is the end of the empire, coming on many fronts. Record flooding, causing crop loss, prices will rise, global unrest, Ebola spreading. Not only that, we're waiting for the grid to fail. Because as we come out of solar minimum in the winter of 2020, 
It's not going to be funny. The sun will burst out its first major M flare earth facing. And it's game on, folks. Are you prepared for what's coming? Do you have backup fuel? Can you cook food? Do you have three years worth of dry goods? I doubt it. Get started. We love you.